just always dreamed of, you know, going and living out in the in the wilderness. But I knew if I did that, I'd just die, you know. Yeah. You know, raised in the city, you know, you'd just die, you know. Uh, I guess what people don't realize is that living out in the bush uh, is a full-time job. Transportation is a big deal. If it costs you three or four hundred dollars every time you want to go to town and back, that can get expensive. It's nearly impossible to cut all your ties with civilization, and especially here in Alaska because. Uh, doggone it, the weather is really brutal. It's a brutal environment, you know. Uh, it got so cold this winter, I couldn't peel my logs after I milled them, so I had to take them into my shop over there and saw them out overnight just to get the bark off. These straps are the greatest. I use them for everything. One thing I love about Alaska is uh, that you have to respect it because uh, you can die. They call it, people call these a gin pole and pick it up and, you know, do all this work and move the logs around without hurting myself, which is real important. You know, you manage the risks and you learn and you, and you, you get self-reliant. But when you're flying, you need to be on your game all the time, and especially in the bush, especially off airport, mountaintops, tundra, gravel bars, uh, landing the float plane in, in the rivers with debris coming down. In the early 70s, there was a big push of people that came, moved, lived out in the woods and built their own log cabin. The first thing I did when I came out here to build this cabin was to form some kind of a crude uh, shelter. Uh, the laws, uh, the way they are, you can't just walk out here and just do whatever you want to do anymore. This is where my family pictures and my children are hanging on the wall. Uh, for me, it's not a recreational process or a cabin. It was, it was my home. You need some subsidy. Yeah, you need the flour, peanut butter, salt, things like that. You can subsidize very heavily. You can pick the fiddlehead ferns in the season and pick your berries and put your fish up and your moose up and dig a root cellar and you can subsidize very heavily. And If you're going to live like they did in the 1800s, uh, life was hard. And, and I knew Alaska. Alaska was the last frontier. You know, it's kind of the, the end of the earth and it still is. When I first got here, you know, I got out into some wild places and uh, was doing some things. And, you know, the, I remember when the thought first came to me that, you know, you could die out here and uh, nobody would know right now. I lived 40 air miles out and the only way in and out was to fly. Not having an airplane, it was just a matter of economics uh, to start flying airplanes. For me, I came out here, you know, I found a piece of property, bought it, built a cabin, was in this cabin within six weeks of the time that I paid for it. Refrigerator flown in, wood stove, all your vitals, uh, all your clothing, and this was actually my home. This is where I came to. Well, everybody can't do that. You can't just have a hundred people on a lake all of a sudden decide they want to build a log cabin. There's no more trees left. Everyone gets a moose, they've killed all the moose.